Warning, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy is rated T for teen. If you are under the age of 13, please ask your parents if you can watch this. If you can't, I have plenty of other videos that you can watch. Have an amazing day. Onward! Hello, it's Classic Cookie Gaming, and welcome to a brand new game that we're playing on the channel. It's, I mean, it's not brand new. It, uh, this released 2014 for the trilogy, and then, oh, the, the original games... The original, these original three games uh, released well before then, but we are, ex I'm excited to play this. Uh, I've always wanted to play the Phoenix Wright series uh, for a while now, and now I'm glad to finally get into it. Uh, just before we start, I would like to let you know this will be um, uploaded twice a week, and I'm going to be doing, because this is a very, very long game, and also because it's a very long game, these videos will be longer than my normal videos, so I'm going to try to make them all around 45 minutes to an hour or so, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, right in that 30 minute window. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into this game. Episode 1, the first turnabout. Okie dokie. Play the first turnabout? Yes! Oh boy. Achievement unlocked first steps. <gasps> oh no. Darn it. Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. I I've got to find someone to put this on. Someone like... Like him! I'll make it look like he did it! Oh no. August 3rd, 19... Er, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. So if you guys didn't know, um, this is the first game of the trilogy, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, and he is an attorney, and we're trying to get to the bottom of who is the murderer of whatever crime happens. So, and he's a lawyer, obviously, so yeah. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, uh, hiya, Chief. Phew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks? Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. Oh, actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Y yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death, despair, oh. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Nick. Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence, I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished. Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who... who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Mm, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. Oh boy. 
In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, I, that and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Here we go, here we go. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I am um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Th thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Handshaking, eyesight, fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Uh, the defendant is Mr. Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just take your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Phew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait, uh-oh. No, no way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure about uh, what you're... Uh, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the victim. Uh, of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it at and check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim uh, in this case? It's probably oh, let's see here. It is Cindy. C Cindy Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct! Now, tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was hit with a blunt, blunt object. I just saw that. She was struck once by a blunt, blunt object. Correct. You've answered all of my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, first... A question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what the object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the Thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Right? Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Okay, we must have to check that record really often. Because she keeps on saying it. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that may help your client's case. You get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything... unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ahem! Mr. Butts! 
Is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were good. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean one of them? Lies, all of it, lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day she died, before she died. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on 7.30, the day before the murder, so July 30th, okay. Hmm, indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Oh. Cindy, my goodness. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? What do you think of her now? Hmm. I'm gonna have him stop answering because that could only go wrong. <laughs> My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. No, it's not, but you know what? We're going with it. Oof. Ugh. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog? Oh. Larry? Dude. Come on. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in somewhere, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with this trial, shall we? I believe the, is, the accused's motives is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not, this, this is so not looking good. Next question. You meant, went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? No. Oh. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. What do I do? Um, well, let's see here. He went. Okay, I don't think there's anything in here that helps us. No one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this around. Okay, um, okay. Have him answer honestly. Or stop, stop him from answering. I'll send him a signal. Lie like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's... It's like this. I don't remember. You... You don't remember? Well then, we'll just have to remind you. Oh, I got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Oh, oh no, oh my goodness, what? Order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Oh, hello, Frank. Mr. Sawit, you saw sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? 
Oh! Oh yes! Newspapers! Yes! Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness testimony. Witnesses account. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately, however the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why was the phone in the victim's apartment not working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawat, Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record added to the court record. Blackout record. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Hmm. He's, okay, noon to 6. And he said that when he arrived at the court, it was 1. Or sorry, not the court, the park. It was 1 already. Okay. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, your honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, your honor? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's a there's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the con contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with tabs and point out contradictions in the testimony. Okie dokie, ma'am. Cross-examination. Witnesses account. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. Okay. Where? Um. Oh, okay. Return. Okay. So I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. The cause of death, or sorry, not the cause of the time of death was between four and five. So he couldn't have been, um, okay, he couldn't have been yeah, if he was out doing that at 1, making the phone call at 1, well, that's impossible because the time of death was between 4 and 5. So he couldn't have discovered the body before then. Okay. Can we just... Oh. Can we just go on? Okay, I thought he must... I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead! I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately, however the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby par park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly, it was 1pm, here we go! Present- wait, what is this? The autopsy- 
since the time of death was between four and five. Present. Objection! Objection. You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at sometime after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Uh, oh, that, how oh, are, um... Uh, this is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sahwit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I, uh, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, great way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Witness testimony, the time of discovery. Okie doke. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, okay. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Okay, the time of discovery. So... You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. Okay, let's see what we have here. So... Time of death... A statue. Blackout record. Oh! It couldn't have been from the TV because they had a blackout from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime, and this obviously was the day of the crime. So, and on top of that, she's been gone. She's been gone for a long time. So I don't know that, okay, recording... I don't think that she could have recorded something that would have been at 1 o'clock if there was a blackout at 1 o'clock, if that makes sense. And besides that, she was gone for a whole week before that. Okay. Let's see what I can do here. Uh, see, I found the time. I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Okay. Present this. Uh, e. Objection! Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Uh... You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Gah! I I will work. Uh... The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah! Uh, wait, I remember now. Mr. Sawit, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. It, it, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Well, very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Witness testimony. Hearing the time. Uh, actually, I don't didn't hear the time. I uh, saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? 
Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to kill to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. The killer used a clock? No, the killer... Uh, you saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Hearing the time. Okay, actually, I didn't hear it. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The victim used... Uh, no, sir. No, that's not what he... Let's see here. Wait, no. The thinker. He obviously used this. Let's see, make sure. Yep, it was blunt trauma, so it could have been a clock, but I think that it's the statue of the thinker because that just makes sense. So, present objection. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? I you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. Mr. Payne, I do not... Okay. I do not believe you for one second. I see. So, the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? That it was a clock? I mean... Th this doesn't look like a clock. What kind of a clock is it? Because... I do have a problem with this testimony. Yes. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testifies, or testified, that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying! You were in you were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it! Uh prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That wasn't the that was the sound you heard. What? Oh my goodness. Order in the court! Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Whoa, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Would the victim care to elaborate? Or would the vi witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, uh, that day, that, I, I never. Look, I, the clock, I heard no, I mean, I saw. Uh, Oh, my goodness. He just threw his toupee at us. Jim, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It was him, I tell you. I saw, I saw him. He, he, he killed her, and he should burn, burn, give him death. My goodness. <laughs> order, order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honor, you claim the sound of the you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is writing on this. I'd better think think it through carefully. 
You, your honor. The sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Uh... I guess... Try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strained way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit. Oh, sorry. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ah! Ah! You forget one thing! Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow... It proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! He's right. How am I going to prove that? Darn it! I was so close! Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Ugh. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Oh no. Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. What? Mia, I, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking outside the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think it through. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right. Right? <laughs> right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? I think I can. Would that be the time difference of... Uh... Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must... You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it! Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Okay, I think it's the passport. Or maybe, wait. If it read 1 o'clock, then... No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been the blackout record. Because the clock worked outside the black blackout record. So I think it's the fact that she was in Paris. Therefore, she must have had a different... Uh, time zone. So she was just adjusting to the time zone. There's a piece of evidence that- okay. Ha! Tough words! Let's see you pull this one off! Let's see what this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. My- I think it's my attorney's badge? No, it is... Uh, not the autopsy report. I think it's the- it's- I mean, one, this is the only thing we haven't used, but I think it's this one. Take that! The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. 
Oh, sneaky. The clock wasn't three hours slow. It was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit. Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Oh, yes, Phoenix. What a line. Oh. What just happened? Are you okay? Order, order, I say. What just happened to Mr. Sawit? Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, uh, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Y yes, your honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the truth culprit at the same time. Thank you, your honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Not guilty. Yay! Yay, we did it! And with that, this court is adjourned. It turned out that Mr. Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see what people were out... Wait. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do, this, to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Phew! I st still can't believe we won! Right! Good job in there! Oh, I don't know why you went British, Mia. Congratulations! Th thanks, Chief! I owe it all to you! Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the chief looking this happy. Oh, I've never seen the chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait. No, I mean bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a No, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. H Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this. Ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh, no. I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait. This wasn't... Wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. R really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick! Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you... Don't that make you want to just cry? <laughs> Larry? Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. 
Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not sympathizing. Really? I'm not just sympathizing. Really? Isn't that right? Right. Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh huh. Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Um, it was obviously the attorney's badge. Um, I'm thinking probably the statue. Um, present. Take that! <laughs> Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't... Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to tra take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. <laughs> the look. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Oh, that's sweet, Mia. Thank you. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Er, uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Oh, Mia. Okay. I think Mia has a crush on me. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave Mia. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end. Oh, okay. Was that the first? Oh, that was the first episode. Okay. A brand new episode has been added. Okay. So I think this one was... Ooh, okay. Saving content. Please do not save. Okay, save. Yes, please. Okay. So, I think while I'm saving this, I think this actually... Ooh, turnabout sisters. This actually ended up being a little shorter than I had. Oh, okay. Wait, hold on. Hold on. No, 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 not yet. Not yet. Okay. We are going to outro it here and save this for the next part. Okay. So if you guys enjoyed this, I think this ended up being a little shorter than um, 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, we finished episode one, which is basically the prologue, the introduction, whatever you want to call it. And it ended up being pretty, pretty insane. We solved the case or, well, I guess we, we defended the case and we even found the murder in the process. So good day to be Phoenix, right? I guess. And if you enjoyed this one, please hit the like button. I plan on having these videos go up twice a week for Phoenix, right? Uh, every Tuesday and Thursday. And then the rest of the week we'll have Minecraft and Roblox. For now we're playing Lumion Legacy on Roblox. And then Stardew Valley Saturdays. So if that sounds interesting to you, please hit that the sub subscribe button. And hit the notification bell too so you know when a video comes out. And have an amazing day. Bye!